So hello folks, uh, my name's Nat Moisden. Uh, I'm doing these videos uh, to try and capture uh, my or our regenerative journey. We're in Upland Hill Farm in Lancashire and uh, we've managed conventionally for a number of years and a couple of years ago I heard of regenerative agriculture uh, and all its plus points, low input costs, sequestering carbon, better for the water table, better for the animals. So I really read up, uh, followed various people on YouTube, on various forums, uh, tried to get myself reasonably well read in the area and, uh, and that's what I'm looking to do. So conventional management, topping like this rush here, topping, spraying uh, with rush and thistles and to be honest you do the same each year, keep coming back to it. Uh, and they have to kind of question how how we're grazing and, and how we're doing things. So, you've seen it probably at its worst, but uh, believe it or not, there was a, uh, an amount of grass on here which, which we've saved uh, for the autumn stroke winter. Uh, and the cows have just started on this round now, so they've grazed most of this off uh, best we can. They're basically having two moves a day roughly half an acre per move uh, and we're supplementing with a bit of hay at the moment but, but nothing else. Uh, one thing with the mob grazing uh, at times we do have I do tighten the cows up real high you know uh, massive high stocking densities uh, to try and have uh, a positive effect on the on the land uh, maybe the following year to get the, uh, the cow parts, the slurry, or we, if you will, uh, and to tr try and really waken some areas up. So areas of high rush, I often do that. So I don't know if you can see on here, uh, there's lots of trampling, lots of cow parts. There's nothing much left. But from all the uh, regen stuff I've been reading up on and learning, it's all about the recovery time. So even though this looks pretty beat up at the moment, uh, I plan then to leave this area empty ooh, probably till next April or May so it's the 21st of October 22 now and uh, and so the cows have come through here uh, chiseled it off put lots of uh, fertilizer on the ground as you can hopefully see in the video and uh, and hopefully it'll uh, kickstart the land ready to come into play next spring obviously with lots of recovery time. There are a few uh, different strands of regen, uh, there's two main schools of thought especially with livestock, there's the uh, eat a third, trample a third and leave a third uh, and then there's another sort of theory or another group whereby they condone or encourage uh, total grazing sort of total sort of non-selective grazing where they take everything and what little bit they don't take they trample to the ground <sighs> i get both sides of the argument i think they're both valid i think they both done well can sort of achieve outcomes and sequester carbon and improve biodiversity and uh, soil life uh, so i'm trying both and trying lots of things to be honest uh, People talk of safety to fail trials and just, just you know, doing various things to try and uh, uh, improve what we've got and, and basically learn from our land type. Uh, a lot of it is about having stock to suit your environment, your particular environment. Uh, so a good few years ago we went on to the link cattle, uh, which are uh, a native hill breed. Uh, and we found that they thrive really well for us outside. We outwinter them all, well, all the adults. Uh, traditionally, we do bring the calves in, uh, well, October time, wean them, keep them in. Uh, but we're getting more and more adventurous, trying to keep the cows out for longer, save costs. Uh, hopefully, with medical ailments as well, hopefully we will uh, have less uh, cases of pneumonia and the like. Uh, if we keep them outside, uh, plenty of fresh air obviously out here. And by moving them twice a day, uh, 
we hopefully get the, the obviously getting a, a fresh bite uh, twice a day, so they're not they're not eating on contaminated ground. So you're probably looking at some of the worst land here, actually, to be fair. But here there is a bit of a bite. It's uh, probably two or three months since we last on here, but the land was in a pretty sorry state uh, beforehand. Uh, so. It is a, you know, it does take time, uh, but we are seeing positive effects already on on some of the other land, and uh, and hopefully with this uh, management grazing management, uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, reap reap what we saw. So one thing with mob grazing is uh, having a good water supply for the cows. Uh, it is a quite a. A hindrance or a kind of a restrict a restriction really on how much you can do it uh, depends on on water so i set up a water supply uh, from a stream and solar powered pumps and the like into ibc's and set up a watering system which we used uh not this summer the summer before and it was a little bit troublesome to be fair always making sure the batteries were working or the solar panels or uh the uh, the pump used to suck up sand out of the stream and that caused issues so it was always a bit of a headache to be honest uh, especially in the hot hot weather so latterly I've uh, there's a spring up on the fell uh, a lot higher up from here and uh, I've basically set up a, an infrastructure of pipe work where I can have two movable troughs like this Kiwi Tech trough here. And, uh, and I've put in some uh, quick couplers uh, up and down uh, the, the the grid really, uh, so I can plug in pipes uh, wherever I want. Uh, and basically, well, the system currently covers uh, well three, three hundred, three or four hundred acres, and uh, I will I will extend it further uh, if if needs be. So this summer, a lot of the springs did dry up. So the cows have already uh, they've been on this little section here today. They've had the second move. I've just actually foddered them with some hay now. I'm just going to uh, one thing I do one thing with the troughs do make a little bit of a mess. Cow parts trodding. So really, if I came back here, when I come back here in spring, just in this little area, there will probably be quite uh, a positive effect. Believe it or not. So uh, what I always do, I move the troughs uh, each day, or even twice a day sometimes, and because it's free water on a spring, it's all coupled up, so I can simply, if I'm moving it any distance, I just do it with the quad. Uh, but now I'm just moving it on, and particularly any, if there are any rushy areas, I can just uh, drag it onto that. And uh, as long as it's reasonably level, uh, that water supply will be good for the cows for the next 24 hours. So I always look the large truck of these once a day. Times of the year, uh, you know, if it, in summertime especially when uh, you know it's really hot and I worry about the cows' water, I uh, I use a drone just to uh, come and check on the water supply. So these cows have just had a feed of hay now, so they're actually yeah, just because of uh, probably because I'm here, they've come for. a a quick drink but uh as you can see we use collars the no offense cattle collars uh this is our second year using the collars found them quite good to be fair a few uh, teething issues and a lot of it's probably uh learning how to use the system uh, as a farmer stroke operator uh, to its best effect uh, like I say, we've got quite a few acres of uh, stockpiled forage, uh, probably uh, much better than uh, what you can see in front of you. Uh, so as they move further over onto the other side of that bar and, and onwards up the hill, uh, we've got a, a good bite of grass there and uh, should give us, uh, for well, get as well into December, January, with stockpiled forage. Uh, especially if I fodder them every day with the hay. I like feeding hay and I know it's not totally regen in some regards. You can just hear the collar there. That's just telling the cow it's on the edge of the boundary. So it turns around, as you can see, 
and goes back into the uh, into today's paddock. Anyway, I'm starting this channel. I just want to record the journey. Uh, no doubt, have some help from my sons. Uh, there are mixed. Uh, there are some. Well, mainly purelings here, uh, but there are a few cross with the Charolais, uh which. Uh, We'll likely go all ling just for ease of management purposes. There's another collar there. So this stirks the thing. Oh, I'll have a fresh piece of grass. And its collar's just alerting it. Uh, but no, let's uh, concentrate on what you've got for now. So the stirk goes back into its area. And uh, I'll move them. Uh, but they don't actually get a shock as such. Uh, well, they didn't then. If it went too far, it would, uh, and obviously they, they learn, learn to the colours. Right, I'll.